Good evening, and how are you all doing? What a joyous lot of lights you are. It is beauteous to see. You have a very wondrous feeling tone. So do you. It's creating some tears. You must have brought a lot of love with you. I hope so. I guess we will get into the spirit of the season. Your season is a wondrous time for your, of your experience. For most of you upon your plane and into your culture, a whole lot of the beauty of the experience is lost. So we're going to work on getting it back. Your time of season has so many ideals and different ways of thought about it. In your last several years, you have what you term your commercialization and you've lost a lot of the beauty of your season. So it is our intent to try to get back to the treasure of it and the spirit that is truly there. What I would like to explain first is a concept that we call a gestalt, a consciousness gestalt, and it will lay a framework for the rest of my discussion. All things that you do upon this plane, you do in consciousness, and your consciousnesses coagulate into what we term gestalts. A gestalt is a combination of like thought. There is nothing you can do that does not require other people to play the game with you. No matter what you would do, no matter what you would be, somebody else has to help you play your game. Anything that you want to do, no matter what it is that you would ever wish or desire to do in this reality takes other people to play certain roles for you. A gestalt is sort of like a library of consciousness where you can go to check out people to play different roles for you. Anybody that is willing to play the same game, anyone who wants to be supporting actors or actresses for other people's games will fill into and be part of a particular gestalt. They are on file in the library. Let's say that you want to paint. You can't be the artist until there is someone who will let you be the painter. You can do it, but without someone to appreciate your work, you aren't going to get it marketed. Without someone to help you create your canvas or your pigment, you won't have anything to paint on or with. So each of these are different players in your game, so to speak. Let's say that you want to be a hairdresser. You can't be a hairdresser until you have other people's heads and hair to work upon. If you wish to play your dream and your reality, you have to have other supporting players in order to do it. So a gestalt actually takes and creates its own rules of what is acceptable and what is not, and who can play the game and how it is to be played. In the hairdresser gestalt, for example, it will tell you that you can and cannot do. It, in this gestalt, you have to have People with hair. Bald people aren't going to be a whole lot of help to you. It tells you what to do, what you go to school for, what you learn, what your talents are, and what your creation will be. It defines the whole limits of your reality in that gestalt. Let's just say that we're going to have a hairdresser here. What are the first things that pop up into your mind is the definition of a hairdresser. Let's share a few of these just for the fun of it. Beauty, a good conversationalist. They don't make very much money. Most of your belief around people in creative arts is that they can't be very wealthy because that is part of the gestalt. If you were to sit and make a list of everything you think about a hairdresser, this will tell you what is part of the gestalt around one. This is just one example. Everything you do in your life creates a gestalt or comes from a gestalt. No matter what it is, or no matter what you wish to be or do, it is ruled by a gestalt. Let's say that here is a hairdresser, and so she is part of the hairdresser gestalt. Let's say that she wants to be a banker now. What are the five, what are the first things that pop up for you when we say that she wants to be the banker next week? She can't be a banker. Why not? She's not trained to be a banker. It's too hard to make that kind of transition. All of this is the definition of a gestalt. No matter who you are or what you are functioning as, these are the things you'll deal with. No matter what you want to be, you have to deal with gestalts. These are your beliefs. Whatever you believe about anything formulates and coagulates into consciousness. And as it does, whatever you wish to be or do will be defined. These are the unsaid rules. That is what a gestalt is. The gestalt says the hairdresser is a hairdresser and she might make it as a waitress or something else, but as a banker, hardly. So if a hairdresser wanted to be a banker, she would really have to work at it to do so. There is nothing that you do upon this planet where you can avoid a gestalt. A gestalt forms the rules of the games you play and most of you are in more than one of them. 
you have individual gestalts and you have family gestalts. That's why most of you act different around every single person you meet. Around your family, you have one image or face and one way they will see you. Around people you work with, you have a different one. These individuals have a personal gestalt and you're playing a role for them. You are playing the son or daughter, the parent, the employer or the employee. You're playing different roles for different people. These are all gestalts. Everything on your planet is a gestalt. They make the rules. They tell you what you will and won't be. And as you try to change and grow, you have to move through them. The trick with a gestalt is to play the game. A gestalt has a very rigid rule around it about what it will and will not accept. Just as we said with the hairdresser trying to be the banker, most of you, if you were being honest, said, well, good dream, but it will be a lot of hard work. It is rather a matter of knowing what the game is and learning how to play it. If you can learn to play the game of consciousness, you can be anything you want in a moment. What you have to do is match and understand what the gestalt is you're dealing with in order to get into it. So if our hairdresser knew what the gestalt was around banking and she still wanted to be a banker, then she'd know that she would have to get a different education, do this and this and this, and then she'd be able to become the banker. Gestalts don't just affect your employment and your relationships, but everything. And this is what you, we are going to talk about is your Christmas gestalt. This is the season of what you term Christmas. This is the season that most of you have connection with in one way or another. For some individuals on your planet, it brings grand depression with some grand joy. Christmas is a gestalt. Christmas is a metaphor. It is a combination of everybody's beliefs and ideals. I want you to go into your feelings. What are the first things that come up when I say Christmas? Be honest. Lots of money, presents, pressure and rush, career and eaves. Okay, what else? Kids and Santa Claus, the birth of Christ, joy, good. See all of these beliefs and ideals and attitudes. You put them all together and this creates the gestalt called Christmas. The gestalt is so large that each of you can focus into it and touch whatever you want. Many times the way a gestalt works is you take it all or nothing. The Gestalt sort of tells you, okay, here's the pearl you are seeking in the middle, but if you want it, you have to take the whole oyster. You may not want the whole oyster, just the pearl. All these things are a portion of the Gestalt of Christmas, a portion of your collective unconsciousness. Whenever you move into a place of wanting to get into Christmas and into the spirit of Christmas generically, you're tapping into all of these attitudes and beliefs about Christmas. So on the one hand, you can feel the joy and love of Christmas, which is what you really want to focus on. But because you are generically using Christmas, you are also getting the rush, the stress and hubbub. You're getting all those things that you wouldn't necessarily tap into if, if you knew that was what you were doing. After a few generations of doing this, when you start connecting into Christmas, most of the spirit of it has been lost. If you were quite honest with it, most of you try to maintain intellectually a feeling tone of the beauty and joy of the season. You truly try to do this, but you get overclouded with all the rest, the rush, the hustle and bustle. It begins to lose meaning to you and the season of Christmas begins to become a burden. When it becomes a burden, many people start getting depressed because they don't know how to find the joy and spirit that is truly there. They are getting the whole oyster and what they want is the pearl. Move into your feelings with Christmas. Don't get into them too deep yet, but the top layer of them. There is some joy there, some excitement, but there is a lot of pressure and the tensions too. We have to learn how to get the pearl without having to take the rest of it. Your Christmas season. Let's get down to some true depth and feeling. What is the Christmas season really when you get rid of all the tension and hubbub? Christmas is a celebration of birth. It doesn't matter what your belief system is. Each may have his own and they are all fine. Your season is a season of birth. It is a time of year when your plants and your planet itself are going into a rest in your winter months. It is building up excitement in order to burst into new life in the spring. It is going into its sleep building and getting ready to birth in the spring as soon as the thaw comes. The creatures are hibernating and there is a renewal time with it. So your whole season is a birth. That is what this season truly is. It is about birth. 
what are you birthing? It's not just birth as in waking up. It is a time of excitement, a time of growth, and a time of deep intensity of joy. But you started using everything else and you became lost in all the metaphors. You don't remember the true feeling in here, and that true feeling is the deep intensity of joy in birth, joy in life. That is what it is all about. From a Christian standpoint, you honor the birth of a Christ. What does that mean to you? It is a time of excitement. It is a time of new life. It is a time of hope. Your season is the time to birth hope. What is the child wanting that is happy with Santa Claus and doesn't understand your whole story of Christ? Why does the child anticipate Santa? It is a joy. It is an excitement that instills in them. They don't care what your metaphor is. They don't care if it is Santa Claus or a Christ baby, but they do know that it is a time of joy, a time of life, of spirit, and there is an excitement. So let's try to start getting into the feelings now. What is that spark, that pearl in there, really? All this other is just stories about it. Santa Claus is a story. Christ is a story. The time of the seasons is a story. But what is the true pearl that is in there? What are they all representing? Let yourselves feel it. If you could have the season mean anything to you, what would it be? When you were a child, what was it? It was an excitement. Let's get in touch with the excitement. It is an excitement of joy, an excitement of life. That is the pearl. It is a season of birth, but the season of birth is to birth that joy and move back into that spark of life. So why did we lose that? We were too busy and life became too complex. We were just running away from it. Let yourselves feel that excitement. Let it tell you its own story. Be willing to do it. The pearl is inside of you right now. Let the excitement that you would truly put back in the season it's not an excitement of going around and buying packages. You started doing the packages and the shopping because it gave you excitement. When you were doing things and giving gifts for other people, that was exciting. And that is why you originally started doing it. Then it became a burden because the checkbook was trying to get balanced. You didn't have enough to go around. You had to figure out where to cut corners and whether you could buy Christmas presents or pay your bills and the spirit was lost. Feel it in there. It is a joy of life. You started celebrating the season to put excitement into your life. You had it already, but it was a celebration of joy. What your season is all about is a celebration of the joy of life and the excitement of the child. But when you went into a place of running away from it, everybody wanted to grow up. They thought that growing up was to let go of the excitement and surprises. Adults always like to know how everything is, you know? Children like excitement. They like the surprises. Why do you think they wait for Santa? It really isn't to see if they have been good or bad. It is because it builds an excitement and a joy in here. Many of you come from deep religious backgrounds. Why did you move into the spirit of the season and the Christ story? You did it because it triggered a joy in there, a hope. They are all the same. Each of them is just a different story or metaphor that people use to explain that feeling of excitement. The feeling of excitement is hope for life and joy. So let's get in and feel it. Let's try to find the pearl. What are you running up against? Let's be honest. We are trying to get into the feeling and we can a little, but what are we coming up against? We're still worrying about the season. We're still worrying about all this other. Why? It is because what you, are key, what you are keying into is Christmas. Christmas has now become such a gestalt that when you think of Christmas, you buy the whole gestalt, not just the pearl. So we are going to learn how to get to the pearl instead of having to take the whole oyster. A gestalt will let you in when you can match it. We've already defined the gestalt of Christmas. It is all this hubbub, this push. Even when you are feeling the joy right now, there is an underlying tension and pressure. You can feel it. So how can we get into the pearl? The pearl is the pure joy and the pure excitement. But what is that? As adults, we all learned how to lose that because it was frivolous. You weren't serious and respectable if you were being silly. When you grew up, you grew out of being a child. 
what is the one image that comes into your mind of the excitement and joy and life and joy of Christmas? Show me an individual here that knows how to totally feel the excitement of the season, a child. So that means the child knows how to get to the joy. That means if the child can get to the joy, which is the pearl, then we're going to have to be the child to get to the pearl. Because when you can become that, the gestalt lets you in. When you match the feeling tone of the gestalt, it assumes you belong to it. And it lets you in and opens the door. What else? Santa Claus. Some of you are from systems that didn't have Santa Claus when you were young, but you had other things. So let's play around with Santa Claus. And we are not trying to take you away from your meaning of Christmas, which is your Christ story. We're trying to get you into a feeling tone. Let's talk about Santa Claus a little bit and the Santa Claus gestalt. What is the gestalt in Santa Claus? Let me tell me all of your ideas about Santa Claus. He's jolly. I want all of them. Anything you can think of about Santa. He's magical. He flies around in a smit lay. He can fit down a chimney, even when there's a fire in it. What are the other beliefs about Santa Claus? As adults, you know that Santa Claus doesn't exist. So you know that it's fiction. He loves everyone. He has an abundance of toys. He knows what you're thinking. He brings you the things you ask for. Do you realize what you have just said in all this? We're going to define the gestalt. As adults, you know that Santa Claus is a myth because you play Santa Claus. You know he doesn't exist. So do you know what the belief is about Santa Claus? What did you just say? Generosity, love, joy, makes people happy abundance, magical. What else did we say? That he doesn't exist. Your Santa Claus gestalt is the one gestalt that you have upon your planet that doesn't have any negativity in it. It was designed by children, the Santa Claus gestalt. The entire belief system in it was a belief through children. They believed in magic. They believed in miracles. They believed in hope. They believed in all these things. The Santa Claus Gestalt is the only Gestalt on your planet that has no negativity in it. It is also the one Gestalt in consciousness here that has every trait and attribute every one of you want. Maybe you don't want the red suit and the funny hat, but every other attribute you want is in there. Do you know what you said? You can't use it because you don't believe in it. So here is a Gestalt with Beauty, joy, love, excitement for life, magic, generosity, abundance, love, because Santa loves you whether you are naughty or nice. It doesn't matter what the song says, everybody knows that. It is a gestalt with no judgment in it and you can't use it because you are adults and don't believe in it. It doesn't matter whether Santa Claus really exists or not. In consciousness he does and that is the joke. Anything that exists in consciousness you can use. Anything that exists in consciousness, you can become part of, and you can use it to enhance your own lives. So here is the one positive gestalt on your planet that just sits there, and the only ones that can use it are children. It seems like a shame to waste it. It doesn't matter if you believe in the funny man with the red suit. It is more the feeling that is in the gestalt because the gestalt doesn't really have the image that much. But it does have the feeling tones. Realize that even from a Christian perspective, what is truly the birth of Christ, if it wasn't hope, if it wasn't magic, through your metaphors, the birth of Christ matches the beauty and everything we just said about the Santa Gestalt. The problem with it is when you tie into it from a Christian perspective. And this is not to put down the Christian perspective because I have grand respect for it. You tie into the whole of Christianity, which means not just the celebration of the birth, but also the death. You're not just taking the joy and the hope for life, but you are taking all the struggle and all the burden of the entire Christian gestalt with it. But when we say Santa Claus, you tune into a whole different picture. To enter into a gestalt and to use a gestalt, you have to have the feeling tone of it. To use the Santa Claus gestalt is to have the feeling tone of it. You have to match what it lets in, which is children, because adults don't believe it exists. From another perspective, by believing it doesn't exist, you are also telling the rest of your reality that anything that exists within that gestalt doesn't exist in your life. 
When you say that Santa Claus doesn't exist, you are also saying that within your life, the magic doesn't exist. The joy and excitement of life doesn't exist. The miracles don't really exist. You're telling your own life that it is void of these things. So I would say if it was me and I knew this, I would try to figure out some way to get back into the gestalt so I could put it into my life and use it. All you have to do is feel as the child and it lets you in, but you have to believe it too. Intellectually, you might say, okay, Santa Claus doesn't exist and I know this, but I'll play the game. You have to feel it. You have to feel what it is. Why would you want a Santa Claus in your life? He gives you gifts. He's jolly all the time. If you could have a Santa Claus that could be in your life all the time, not just once a year, how would that change your life? We want to move into this gestalt and learn to keep it all year. Realize that it is the least used gestalt because it is seasonal. This means that about nine of the rest of the months of the year, nobody is even using it. The larger gestalt is, the busier it is. You start picking up more stuff from everybody that is attached to it. With this gestalt, it's only going to let you attach to it if you can be as a child, so it will never pick up adult negativity. It will never continue those attributes you say you don't want in your lives, but it could be enhancing your lives all year. And see, even your children don't use it except at Christmas time. So the real trick here and the real miracle of the season will be if we can trigger within and get ourselves back into being the child and allowing ourselves to believe in a miracle and a hope and an expectation. That is the real miracle of the season. It doesn't matter what it takes an individual to do to get into that. Your season is a season to jog you back into joy. It is a season to jog you back into some excitement, some expectation for fun and life. It is a season to birth these beautiful, joyous gifts of your own spirit, and we get too busy to even use it. Also, the more individuals that are focused on one thing, the easier it is to get drawn into it. So when everybody in the world is focused on the hassles of Christmas, you're going to get fed more of that unless you can find your own inner joy and peace. So do you think you really could believe in Santa Claus? Technically, we're all adults here. Can we really do this? Intellectually, maybe we can talk ourselves into it, especially if it will get us something, but can we feel it? Do you know what you'd be saying if you could truly feel that you believed in a Santa Claus? You would be saying that you believed in the very thing your whole Christ story was about, which was hope for something new. Most of you, if you try to focus from the Christ perspective with it, you can do it, but you have so much other baggage that you have to take with it that it makes it difficult. So we're going to try to short circuit the baggage, but realize that what you're going to be accomplishing is all the same anyway. It is a feeling tone in the heart. So let's be honest, check your feelings out. Can we really feel a belief in Santa Claus? Not intellectually, just say it, but can we generate the feeling? Let's try. We're going to believe in Santa Claus. Realize that Santa Claus is just a metaphor. It is just a face that we put on something that we wish for, but to get into it, you have to feel it. All you're trying to do is feel the excitement of the child. If you can feel the excitement of the child, knowing that a miracle can exist, you can access it. It won't let adults in because adults don't believe in it. So you have to leave the adults at the door and stick them outside in the cold. It's a good place for them. Let's take our adults and put it outside the door and resurrect our inner child within. Bring it up. Many of you, when you were children, believed in a Santa Claus. You can use that past belief to help you generate it again. Remember the excitement, and you don't want to remember this right now, but remember how disappointed you were when you found out that there really wasn't a Santa Claus. That is the same thing as taking hope away from people, and that's where most of you are. It's not necessarily that you don't believe in Santa Claus anymore, but life has a way of taking hope away. Without hope and without that joy for life, life isn't worth living, and most of you know that. If you are in a place where you have no joy, no excitement, no beauty, and no hope in this life, it doesn't make it very beautiful and worth living to you. The times that you're in joy and the times that the excitement is there and you can feel it and you're happy and you're excited, you wouldn't trade for anything in the world. 
During those times, you love being alive and you love existence. It is the rest of the time when you don't feel the hope and the excitement that you're not so thrilled with it. So what we're doing now is getting back into our hope and excitement. That is our key word here, excitement, our joy and our expectation. It's not expectation like you're expecting some big thing out there, but expectation for the next step of the journey with excitement, fun, because whatever you feel within will create your reality and your view of it. So all adults outside. Now let's take a joyous moment and let's get rid of our adults for a few minutes. You can always pick them up at the door when you leave, if you want them. Let go of the adult and get back to that child. You were all children once. Even those of you who had rough childhoods, there were at least moments in there when you had excitement that you can remember. Remember the excitement of the child before you started worrying about all these adult things. Let's bring it up larger and focus it. Touch into that joy. Let's see if we can't believe in a Santa Claus. Now, when you start feeling, feel your belief in Santa Claus, not just think it, Try to feel it. It's okay for your minds to know that this is just a metaphor for a feeling, but get into it. We believe in a Santa Claus and he's going to visit you. Notice any resistance you have to it? Any resistance you have, it tells you where you believe that the miracle of life can happen for you. We're going to feel back into the belief in miracles and the magic. I'm starting to feel some children arise here. We still have a few adults, but they're dwindling. The child, Feel that there is a Santa Claus. Like we said, we're going to tap into the Santa Claus gestalt. So feel Santa Claus and he's going to come visit you. Put it into a knowingness, not just an intellectual perspective, but a knowingness out of these hearts. Feel it, know it. Be aware of your resistance in any portion of you that thinks this is really silly. That's your adult thinking, denial. Dismiss your adult and come back to Santa Claus. Now let's try a few abstracts here. Santa Claus is going to fly with his reindeer and come down your chimney. Notice where the intellectual mind throws the belief out. Notice where it says, "Uh uh-huh, sure, let go of it. Life is a game anyway, so learn to play it by your rules. You want the joy in your life. All of you say you believe in miracles, but yet you won't let them happen for you that often. Put the wonderment in life. Let yourselves reconnect with that. See how much intensity inside you can get out of the joy of a child. Let it build enough that you can do this anytime you want to, so it doesn't have to be just one time of year. The excitement of the child, feel it inside and let go of all the pain of being an adult. It hasn't gotten you anything anyway. Generate the intensities, the anticipation of waiting for Santa Claus to come. Let yourselves connect and feel. Notice where the mind still resists. That joy you're feeling, why did you ever let yourselves get away from it? That joy is what makes life worth living. You know that. It's a treasure. So why did you ever let go of it? Let yourselves feel why you let go of it, and then you'll understand why you don't maintain it. Why did you ever let go of that joy? Were you not feeling worthy of having it? Is it not this joy and this expectation of life, this anticipation? Is this not the treasure of the universe and the gift of the gods? So why did you let it go? You just sat there and generated it so you were capable of doing so. It means you never really lost it. You've just been avoiding it. Why? That joy in there is your grandest treasure. That's what every one of you verbally say you want your life to be all the time. If you had to write down how you wanted your life to feel in a 24-hour basis, this feeling of joy is going to be pretty close to the top of your list and you just created it. It didn't take anything but you. You did it yourself. So why don't you let yourselves do it all the time? Why don't you allow yourselves to maintain this? Why were you willing to ever let go of it? You grew up. That's what happened. Did you grow up or did you just give your gifts away? If growing up means that you have to lose this feeling, then why would any of you want to do so? I sure wouldn't. Let's let go of the rest of this adult stuff. Just because it is the joy of the child doesn't mean that it isn't intelligent. It doesn't mean that it's not brilliant. Get back into the joy and the excitement of being a child. This season is the season of the child and you all know that. 
It doesn't matter what metaphor you use, it is for the children. So let yourselves be the children in a feeling so you can be part of the season instead of just part of the hubbub of the adult mind. Once again, we're going to let all this serious adult stuff out the door and let's get back into that joy. That joy, however, is so intense and so beautiful when you're willing to get into it that it makes the rest of your life mundane and hard to get along with. If you had this joy 24 hours a day, there would be nothing in life that would not be exciting and fun to you, which means that you would have to give up your struggle. You'd have to give up your stresses, your pain, because all that would be there would be this joy. And so everything you would accomplish would be done in joy and love. You would no longer know struggle. All you would have to do is touch inside here. Let's blow away all this serious stuff. That is your pain from losing your child. Those are your regrets. Let go of it and let's get into Santa Claus now. Be the child on Christmas Eve and Santa Claus is just hours away. What are you going to get? What is it you really want? You know that if you believe in it enough, you will have it. So let yourself feel it. You're the child just moments away from Santa Claus's arrival. And what do you want? Now you have to feel the excitement. If you can feel the excitement, that excitement is also the knowing that you can accomplish it and have it. So for those of you who can really believe in Santa Claus, really believe it, not talk yourselves into it, but feel it, I'm going to play Santa Claus. Philip then asks each person in class what they would like from Santa Claus and gives them each a so be it to their desires. Now there are many who are not with us tonight who will read or hear this session some other time. And to the believing child in you, know that I so be your wishes also, now or at any time of the year. But know that you, the gods here, create what you want. The so be it's only assist and facilitate you in your creation. And remember, even when you were kids, you started at Christmas to give Santa Claus all year to give it to you. But you started writing your lists very early. For most of you, the things you've asked for, you already have. So on top of your request, I will add the ability to recognize what you already have and celebrate it. So be it on all of your requests. And we also add one of our own. It is our intention and direction to lay frameworks and understanding to teach you to celebrate life. This is our direction, which means that we're going to push joy and help to develop the expression of the self. And so I will so be that on top of everything else. We love you all very grandly. To us, this is a treasure beyond your comprehension right now, because from your perspective, you're having fun. But I don't think you realize that we do too. We do enjoy the experience and the opportunity to share with you. This is one of the grandest gifts you have all given us, so we thank you for it. I love you all very, very grandly, and we would embrace anyone who would like to this evening. I have a Merry Christmas and a very joyous New Year, but let it start tonight. Your calendar is wrong anyway. They don't even have the dates right on it. Let your New Year start now. You already started. You have the joy, so let's just keep it. I do love you, so good night. Be at peace and try to truly celebrate the season. I hate to leave, so I will embrace those who would, and then I will leave. It gives me an opportunity to hang out in a few more minutes. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night.